Welcome to Back Porch Writer, the show for writers, about writers, and writing, with your host, Corey Miller. Call Corey at 646-716-5063. Follow the show online at Blog Talk Radio and Facebook. Now, it's time to chat with the Back Porch Writer. Welcome to Back Porch Writer, the show for writers, about writers, and writing. I'm your host, Corey Miller. Today is December 8th, 2015, and it's a whopping 39 degrees outside. Now, if you've been listening to the show and following it, you've been through a couple seasons with me, so you know that 39 degrees in Nebraska is not that bad this time of year. That's actually sort of warm. And so my oldest went outside and said, I just need a light jacket. I thought he was you know, insane for saying that, but that's okay. He didn't take his big tote. He thought he'd be fine. So, all right. So, 39 degrees, not too bad. And actually, it's supposed to get into the 50s, which is warm for us this time of year. That's incredibly warm. That's You can go wash your car and your locks won't freeze. That's how warm that is for us here, which I was able to do yesterday. I'm very happy about that because my car was filthy. Had a, a whole layer, several layers of just ooze and mud and everything covering the entire car. It was disgusting. It was one of those situations where you didn't even really want to test it touch it so you've got you open up the back door the back hatch or whatever and then you want to have to shut it down but you don't want to touch anything it's kind of difficult so now it's all clean and I'm, I'm happy about that I had a very busy weekend and a huge hugely successful weekend in my view this is this last weekend was the holiday market and I do that every year in December the first weekend in December I participate in this holiday market in Omaha and it's the last outdoor market that I do for my tea business uh, but this year I took books. Last year I took a couple books, but this year I had more books to take. So I had Hush, and I had Deadly Sins, and I had uh, My Life in Black and White, and Dante. I had all those four books with me, and so they took about half of the table. And so I was doing tea and books this year, and it was fabulous. I, I was able to engage with lots of people and get more people on my email list. It was just a fabulous, fabulous time. It's always a great event for, for the tea side of my business, but this time it was even better, and I just had a ball. And I always share space with Patricia's Shortbread. So if you if you like shortbread, you need to check out Patricia's Shortbread. It is phenomenal, um, and and they've got a couple like pistachio that's just oh, and they sort of crumbling rounds. It's it's wonderful, wonderful shortbread. And of course, we share space because shortbread cookies and tea kind of you know that's a no brainer. That works really well together. So check out Patricia's Shortbread. So great weekend. And then yesterday I substitute taught. I was teaching at my child's school. And it was my first day being a sub, and it was so much fun. I got to substitute for the music teacher. And all the children are preparing right now for their, their Christmas concert. And so I had to help them prepare for their Christmas concert. And I had kindergartners, I had uh, first graders, I had fifth graders and sixth graders. Oh, it was just a blast. I had a great time. So just all in all, great weekend and a great Monday. Now today, after this show, Indie Author Hour is happening at 11 o'clock over on Blab I Am. So you'll want to check that out. I, I host that show with Hardy LaBelle. He is a nonfiction author. And so we get together and we just chat about what works for us, what's not working for us, what are we trying, what are we reading right now, things like that. So today at 11 o'clock, that's Central Daylight Time, 12 o'clock Eastern, we'll be talking about a book that we both have read called The Brain Audit and just fascinating information. So Check that out at 11 o'clock if you can. If you can't, it is recorded, so you can always check it out over on YouTube or on my author site at CoreyDMiller.com. I also came across something over from the Author Biz Show with Stephen Campbell. I'm listening to his podcast, and it's a great podcast. If you haven't checked it out, it's the Author Biz Show. He had a guest on named Beth Hayden, and she is basically a social marketing social media marketing expert, blogger, that sort of thing. And apparently she's having a Pinterest for Authors webinar coming up on December 10th. I haven't found all the details about that, so you'll have to Google it. But she, if you go to her site, it's just BethHayden.com, you'll find a lot of other information and some useful articles on building your email list or why she just uh, cleaned her email list of like over 2,000 subscribers that she just took off her list and why she did that. It was very logical. So great site. I'm just now uh, perusing that site. So check it out. Today my guest is Linda Reisenberg Fissler, and she is the author of a book called Blind Influence. Now this book, let me be back up for a minute. She's an artist too, I should say. She's an artist and author, which is very cool. But she wrote this book called Blind Influence. And one of the things that I really liked about 
her book and this is the description. So you go over to Amazon and it says something like, it is kind of like Jason Bourne meets the good wife in the West Wing. I thought, that's hilarious. And that's a really good hook because, you know, a lot of people are into all of those sorts of things. West Wing, good wife. I, I like Jason Bourne. I love that that whole series. So that got my attention right away. So I'm going to bring her on and she can tell us all about the whys of that. Why did she do it that way? Welcome back, Porch Rider, Linda. Hey, thanks, Corey. It's good to talk with you again. I know that, uh, you know, we, we talked earlier and actually on my artist podcast talking about strategies. So it's really good to hear your voice again. Oh, well, thanks. This is going to be so much fun because now we can continue the conversation a little bit and, and be even more <laughs> focused on the whole, on the author side and what you do. So I want to start with the the book description because lately I've been really into learning about book blurbs, writing better copy for that, especially like on the Amazon page and everything. So how did you come up with what you're using for yours? Um, Well, it was kind of interesting as I I belong to the uh, Alliance of Independent Authors, which you do as well, and and Joanna Joanna Penn actually talked about using um, hook lines like this. So... It took me a while to develop this one. Um, I just basically thought about my three main characters, which uh, one is Nicole Charbonneau, and she is a uh, attorney. Uh, so that was the good wife hook. But she's not married, but it gets attorney across pretty quickly when you say that because it's a very mainstream show. And then I had an MI6 agent, and um, what got me into writing this book was um, – the Jason Bourne series from Robert Ludlum. I read the first book and was a little upset that Carlos Jackal didn't get caught in that first book. And um, by the time I got through the second book, I was like, okay, I'm done with this. I'm going to write my own. (laughs) Not that I'm Robert Ludlum, mind you, but, you know, I I can't handle this. I'm writing my own. This this guy's going to get caught or he's not going to get caught. We'll see how it goes. But um, so that that's where the Jason Bourne came from. And then the West Wing is I have a senator, Senator Robert Jenkins, um, and he's a Democrat, and the West Wing was naturally a Democratic president and, and, uh, and all that uh, type of interaction that goes on between the senator and he's on the intelligence committee, so he has a very prominent role. He's one of what the, what, we, what I call the Phenom Five, which is uh, five of the uh, representatives and, and senators that are kind of like on the Democratic advisory committee, if you want to call it that, where – they, everybody kind of like goes to them and says, hey, why don't we do this? And they have to give their approval, you know, kind of like the, if you think back to the, the group, the Republican group that came out with the Contracts of America, you know, they were kind of setting the, the political agenda. And that's kind of what the Phenom Five is doing. And Robert Jenkins, Senator Jenkins, is part of that Phenom Five. So, um, so basically I took that and said, well, let's just get something catchy because, I've been doing uh, book signings up at an airport uh, bookstore, and you only have a couple seconds to grab someone as they're walking by. And, you know, first you have chocolate, so you have something good and sweet for them to eat. <laughs> right. and, then, and then the next thing you have to do is, you know, when they say, what's your book about, you don't have five minutes. You've got less than that. So I just basically throw that line at them. It's like Jason Bourne meets the wife in the West Wing, and they're like, oh, Oh, I like all those. You know, so exactly. then they start into you know you send it start into a conversation with them, and you know usually after about thirty five forty seconds, maybe they have got the book in their hand and they're like, okay, I'm going to buy this. Will you sign it? And it's like, yeah, absolutely. So you know, right, real quick sale. Right. Yeah. So the only bad thing about signing in an airport is you know you have peak times when everybody's running to their plane to catch their other plane, and then you have like these down times. So. The people you end up hitting are the people that come early to get through um, security and mm-hmm. have time to kill. Those are the ones that you usually end up, um, you know, getting into really long conversations with. Mm-hmm. So the interesting thing I notice is that on the Amazon page you have that that piece of copy in the title, if I remember right. Mm-hmm. Right? right. So you had it right yes, there. Oh yes, I do. Yeah. And what did you say, yeah. Joanna Penn called that? Well, there's a place called Subtitle um, in when you're filling out your book in Kindle, and I and actually I think for the paperback as well. I have to actually go back and look. But um, so a lot of times, like if you're doing a, a nonfiction book, uh, you, you put in your title and you put in a subtitle, which actually kind of finishes out what that how-to is about. 
So I just right. I decided that I was going to put in the title, which is Blind Influence, and in the subtitle I was going to put this hook line. And, um, you know, figuring that if, you know, people didn't like Jason Bourne, The Good Wife, or The West Wing, they'd move on, but people that do like those three things would would get hooked a little bit quicker. Mm-hmm. Well, and, yeah, it's a brilliant three idea. Three. Now I have to steal it. <laughs> <laughs> Go right ahead. <laughs> so, anybody out there is welcome. I did not patent it. It's not copyrighted. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I'm going to have to come up with something for my books now because that, that's a great idea. And it definitely works because I, I sat there and I read that and then I went down further and read some other stuff, you know. So it, right. it got me to, right. to do what you wanted me to do, which was stop and read this. So right. I, you just but, mentioned the whole airport thing, and I, I now I remember that we I read that in some exchange, probably on the forum, the Ally Forum in uh, Facebook, that you had done the, mm-hmm. the airport thing. So what made you decide to go to airports? Um, well, it was an interesting thing. Is I had uh, read that this one particular, um, it's called Booksellers at, Heritage Booksellers at the Dayton Airport, um, it, which is part of the Prodig- Prodigies, I think, um, company. And that particular company owns space, if you will, in different airports. But the one, is, uh, the one that I sell out is out of Dayton, Ohio. And uh, basically, I called them and asked them. Actually, I sent them an email. After, I'm trying to remember. It's been a while. So um, I sent them an email and asked if they ever did any kind of author signings or anything like that. And they just happened to do that. They have a. They had a uh, person that works there who's very much into bringing in authors and trying to set up author panels and things like that. So I wrote them, and then next thing I know, it was forwarded to this particular person, and she called me on the phone and said, you know, yeah, we'd love to have you up. So it's kind of interesting because you still have to go through security, so you know, and you have to bring all of your uh, props with you. Like one of the props I have is a big poster that has a picture of me sitting at the desk acting like I'm signing a book, and then I have a little blurbs of, um, you know, the reviews out on Amazon that it's getting three and five star reviews, and you know that that it's won a couple awards. So I have the award badges on there and and different things like that. So that's setting a little bit up from me where my table is so that when people walking by kind of absentmindedly they look over and they see this really nice poster and and then it's like oh okay so that's your first set of interest and then the next point is you know well what's your book about and then it's the hook line and then by that time hopefully they have enough interest that you can start going on and talking a little bit more about the book and uh, why you wrote it you know whatever questions they come up with if you just engage in dialogue and try to build a, a really quick relationship with somebody who's going to be jumping on a plane going somewhere mm-hmm. else. My book's been to Guatemala. It's been to, yeah. you know, uh, West Coast. I mean, this is like a, a great way that you can get your book out there making a personal relationship with somebody first, and then they take it back to their city, and hopefully that great word-of-mouth advertising starts happening. You know, hey, I read this quick read, or I read this nice book, or you know, hey, you'll like this too because I like, you know, I really like this about the author. And and then, you know, naturally you have your guest book there so that you can get their email address and then you add that to your, your mailing list so that you can constantly stay in contact with them too. So well, not, you know, not constantly as in every day, but constantly you know, once a month or something. Don't spam people, yeah. but, you know, consistently just, just continue to build that. Right, right, exactly. So, when, so at the airports, what did you – uh, find when people came up and you know some people are are more into e readers and and reading the ebooks and you had i assume physical copies of your books so how did you handle those sorts of situations um I had a postcard that had the cover of it on the on the front so my front cover is on the front of the postcard on the side where the address would usually go I would have the book description along with the tagline and then mm-hmm. on the other side. I would write available on Amazon or whatever ebook, you know, i you know, iBooks, whatever, whatever, wherever it is available. I have, I write that in, and then thank them for their interest and sign my name. So they're getting a postcard with my signature on it and all of this information. So it reminds them of a conversation that we had. And um, I've had actually four or five people come that did prefer the ebook version. Um, actually, I found out that once they actually talk to you. They want that signed copy, so I've actually sold more actual hardbacks than I have ebooks um, with that. The only time that I really run into that is somebody who's like an overpacker and <laughs> doesn't want to carry one more thing, 
then they usually get the, the postcard with the with the ebook, uh, you know, buy it on Amazon type of thing. So. Mm-hmm. Things well, like it's that. a great idea to be at the airports because I used to travel for a living, and so I, I've been in lots of airports around the country, lots of bookstores around the country inside of airports, and you know, looking for something I just can take on the plane, you know, and and right. read while I'm on the plane. So it it really is a great strategy. Um, the other thing I was thinking as we're sitting here talking about it is you could I don't know if people still use this, but you could put QR codes on those postcards because the QR yeah, code can could. link directly to the web to the buy page. Yes. Yeah, you could. And I mean, I, these particular websites that I, or this particular postcard that I got, um, actually came from the people that I worked with to, to publish the book, who I am mm-hmm. no longer working with. But um, ah. so I really didn't have a, a chance to do that. Now, when you go and do it, create it at this print, which is what I'm about ready to do for my next signing, uh, yeah, you could do that for sure. Yeah, I know that's what I did on my business cards. I put a QR code <laughs> on yeah. there. You know, and, and I thought, that's kind of a neat idea. I got that from another author somewhere along the way in the last couple of years. Um, I also, I thought, and I, and I think this was in the same string the, of this, the forum when you were talking about the, the airport thing, but some author had mentioned about using, you know, those little um, memory sticks or whatever. I don't even know if that's what they're mm-hmm. called because I've never used yeah, one. Flash drive. But, or, flash yeah. drive, thank you. And putting the the books, copies of the books on the flash drives. And she was right. selling those. And I thought, oh, my yep. goodness. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's another really cool idea. Flash drive. I just, you just reminded me of that. Uh, I have to go over to but Staples the, anyway, so <laughs> see what they have. Well, you get a flash drive. But, uh, yeah, so I thought, oh, that's another way to deal with, you know, somebody who says they just want the the e- e-book copies or whatever. I go, oh, okay, well, I've got this flash drive for X number of dollars. <laughs> you know? Right, right. And somebody might buy that. So, I was looking at the description you gave me for your bio, and you were talking about the awards, and I was curious, you know, how did you find out about these awards? You had one that was the 2015 Paris Book Festival and then the Hollywood Book Festival. How did you right. get in contact with these things? Yeah, it just won a third one, actually, at the Great Midwest Book Festival, too. Um, oh, I, what cool. I did, is out on the Alley site, the uh, Alliance of Independent Author website, there was a blog, you go search for it, but there was a blog that talked about indie author friendly book contest and um the first one that was listed was the the paris book festival and and that was interesting because my book was just basically being launched may 1st and it had a deadline of like may 15th or something like that and and i'm thinking oh yeah i'm gonna send them a book and you know they're just they're not going to read it because it's only 14 days and who knows how many books they've actually read but they actually had a little blurb in there saying like even if you submit this on May 14th, we are going to read it, and, and we promise we will do this. And they were really proactive about that, and I thought, well, okay, I'll, I'll uh, go ahead and sign in, you know, send it in and see what happens. And um, Joel, Joel Freelander, I believe, is, uh, is his name. I don't know if I actually pronounced it right, but he was he actually wrote the blog on Alley about the ones that were independent, friendly uh, book festival book contest competitions. And so I felt pretty, you know, reliable that that this was going to be a good competition, and um, it was well recommended, and that's why I, why I went ahead and sent it in. And I can't tell you that, like, two weeks later, I think it was, they, they came out with the announcements, and this being my debut fiction novel, you know, to, to be mentioned as an honorable mention. I mean, my I was shaking. My husband thought somebody died because I was sitting in the <laughs> living room, and I just went, oh. My God! <laughs> and all of a sudden, <laughs> Tom comes running out. My husband comes running out, and he's like, you, "What? What happened? What's going on?" And I'm like, tears rolling down my face. I mean, yeah, you have to understand. I've been painting as an artist for the longest time, and have never won a major competition. I've won minor ones, but you know, I'm award-winning in that and all that in my art. But you know, to, the first book out to win, you know, a pretty major competition, mm-hmm. I was just like in shock. So. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so that was that was. I'll never forget that day. I mean, knees buckling, shaking, you know, happy, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it was nice. So uh, with the award and everything, how has winning the awards helped you as an author? I, I think it gives. Um, you know, folks are, are a little shy. I think with with new authors, especially independent authors. Um, so I think it just gives a little bit of credence that 
you know, this book does have some substance to it. it it's not, you know, there's a lot of um, range of quality, if you will, out on the, the book market today. And I think winning that award just kind of gives somebody a self, you know, just kind of a little bit more confidence in buying it. That, And I thought it was interesting because I didn't have my stickers yet the first time I went out up to Dayton to in, at the airport to sell. I didn't have my stickers yet. And I, so I was mentioning that it won the award and the stickers were on the way. And this one lady just looked at me, she goes, oh, you don't have a sticker on here. You need a sticker on here. But she was telling me how to market my book <laughs> with the sticker. And I was like, it hasn't arrived yet. I've ordered them. You know? And I was like, give me your address. I'll send you one when it comes in. I mean, it was just hilarious, the, the whole conversation we were having. And, I mean, this was this had to be a reader that, you know, really put a lot of stock in, in books that won competitions and um, looked for that kind of thing because, I mean, she was just so well-educated on – you know, what that sticker had meant to her. So, you know, from that point on, it was like anything, any competition you win, get it out there, start, you know, start announcing it, put it in a blog. And that's basically what I did. I came back from that that meeting and, and or that uh, signing and just went right into writing um, you know, a blog about, you know, the fact that it won and getting it out there on the Internet, social media, social media pinning the award out on Pinterest, yeah, all of that kind of stuff. So um, it does, I think, give just, especially a debut novel, especially a, a, a writer that's somewhat unknown, I think it just gives a little bit of, of credence and confidence to the, the person that's going to buy the book. Now, these particular contests, are they the type that there's an entry for the, the author to, because I know there was one that I came across, and I can't remember the name of it, but there you did pay a, a fee to participate in, in the contest. And so what were these like? You know, I can't remember if there was a fee or not, but I can look it up really quickly. Um, let me see. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm thinking. I don't think there was for this particular one. Um, and then there's a part of me that keeps saying it was like twenty five dollars. It wasn't anything um, really, really steep. Otherwise, you know, I'm not particularly sure I would have done it at that point in time, just because you know, how much, how much. Um, how, how big a how you know at that point I was thinking being an artist and and putting lots of money into to the major award um, competitions you know and, and not and falling short I kept thinking like I'm not really not into that much competition <laughs> to begin with but mm-hmm. um, you know so yeah I'm, I'm looking at the site right now yes there is there is a um, a charge and I think it's about twenty five dollars or so fifty dollars it went up. So fifty dollars for each book is the entry mm-hmm. fee, and Paris is now accepting um, applications for 2016. So it, it's open already for that too. So yeah, so it's fifty dollars for Paris. I think um, they change depending on on how big a competition they are. So mm-hmm. there, there are some out there that I've seen uh, for ten. I've seen some for free as well. Um, I and like I said, I'm not really big in the competition. I you know I did it basically because I was a debut author and thought that it would be a way, you know, to, to kind of give the readers something to say, well, it did win an award, so, you know, it must be worth right. reading, you know, and purchasing. So um, it, it, I have enough competition with myself. I don't <laughs> I have that <laughs> whole conversation going on. I'm like, yeah, I can write. No, I can't write. Yes, you can write. You know, yeah, you can paint. You can do so I, I really try to minimize that as much as I can. I, but I think it's a, a good promotion tool, and I think it gives you something to go out on the Internet and talk about um, the fact that yeah. you won awards and, and things like that. So it's a marketing tool. It, is, it, it really yeah. helps from that standpoint. It is a marketing tool. Without a doubt, I've seen lots of authors who do that. It, I, the contest I was thinking of was the IPPY Awards, and I don't know, remember oh, what yeah. IPPY stands for. It's IPPY. Or something. I've encountered a lot of authors who have done that. Some of whom have have gotten you know one honor honorable mention or whatever different things that they won. I think that one seems to be a little bit more of an expensive one, not not hugely, but more than ten dollars for sure. Um, right. But I right. can't recall the exact amount. Um, but yeah, it is a marketing tool. So speaking of marketing tools, we've got a, you know about four minutes or so left. So let's talk about how what other things you're doing for marketing. Well, since we got four minutes left, I do want to announce this. This is a, a marketing tool that you can use, but I wanted to make this offer to all all of the listeners out there. Um, I'm 
I actually just published a new how to and the how to book is how to take time how to take your time back. It's a quick guide with it actually you can journal it's got a task analysis and it tells you how to use your task analysis so that you can figure out where you're spending your time. And then it also talks about setting your objectives and your goals and strategies and how to measure those strategies to see if they're working. So this is a, a free giveaway. It's out on my website, lindafisler.com, um, F-I-S-L-E-R.com. And then um, there's also Blind Intention, which was a prequel, a, a prequel, I'll put those two together when I'm talking to myself, a prequel novella. So Blind Intention was set up originally for me to basically get uh, people on the Internet interested in buying Blind Influence. And that particular book is just three short stories on the three main characters. So the MI6 agent, John Atkins, Nicole Charbonneau, who is the attorney, and and she's actually the main main character. And then um, the third character, Robert Jenkins. And it's my book is set in 1979, so this goes back to 1964. And Nicole's just mm-hmm. graduating from Harvard Law School, and so it talks about, it gives a background on each of these mm-hmm. three characters. So Blind Intention is then, I use that as a prequel. I give that away free on Kindle uh, once every three months. Um, You know, I also run a countdown on it every once in a while. So this is kind of like another hook to get them interested in the characters. So that one is available free on my site for the next couple days, and so is the How to Take Back Your Time, a a quick guide to time management. So if you go out to my site, you can download it. So that's like one strategy that I'm using to get people to recognize me. And then um, another strategy is more on a local level is trying to get people in my area to know about me and to know about my books. So I go out and I do book signings at a number of different places. Like there's a little boutique store that I sign, that I do signings through. There probably will be a bar that I go to to do signings um, and then they'll, and bookstores as well. So, and those um, particular places again are just, I, I just, basically have a, a piece of paper that says you can download the prequel off of my site. This is the one that's coming up. I'm actually printing the, the uh, prequel. I'm printing about 20 copies of the prequel in a book, and I will probably just hand that to them. If they buy the book, you know, you get the free prequel with the book, mm-hmm. and that, that's what I'm going to do on the 18th. So um, just a whole different, another, you know, whole, whole strategies like that. It, it's a matter of I'm, I'm probably giving away more than than I'm actually making at this point. But since I'm new as a writer, I need to get people interested. I need to build my platform. I need to build that email address. So um, basically, that's what I'm focusing on as a debut author right now is just trying to get people interested in me and my writing and the stories that I'm telling. So. Um, that's the focus. Does that help? <laughs> that does help. I think you know that is the single best advice I know that I've received over the last several years. And you and I have a very similar strategy, similar approach to how we're doing the, this whole book author business stuff. And right. it is the the building that email list, especially if you're new, and figuring out you know these are the people that you can market to because they actually want to hear from you. <laughs> you know? Right. Right. So yeah, you know, building I think we talked idea. a little bit on the other podcast about free and it being a slippery slope. And, you know, it, it, to me it comes down to there are books that I will use as free, and then there are books that I put so much effort into and so much writing, and, you know, and I have a professional cover, and I have a, you know, I've had it professionally edited and, and you know, and the whole nine yards, and those I'm not so willing to give away free. You know, but there are mm-hmm. some things that that I can do that is free that attract people, and, and basically, if you give everything away free, they're not going to be interested in ever buying anything because it's a very it's a slippery slope, True. I think. So, and and I want to build people who I want to build a relationship with people who like my writing, like my characters, and want and want to know about me, and want to know about my characters and how I'm doing. Right. It. Those are the people that are going to stay around for a very very long time. And, that's who I want to build a relationship with. Absolutely. And on that note, that is where I want to leave us. I want to thank okay. you, Linda, for being on the show with me here on Back Porch Writer. I appreciate your time. And those are some great words of wisdom. Not everything can go away for free. <laughs> right, right. So keep that in mind. <laughs> thank but you so much. LindaFistler.com. <laughs> I'll have it in the show notes so people know how to get you. 
Great. That would be Have great. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot. Bye. Mm-hmm. Oh, we are quickly running out of time. I want to thank you for joining me on Back Porch Writer, the show for writers about writers and writing. Again, I'm your host, Corey Miller. Until next time, pull up a chair, sit a spell, and write.